And uh, would be remiss if, if we didn't mention the fact that uh, in 1983, you moved on to the final against Martina Navratilova. You played her in the French Open final and uh, the year before, and, and uh, uh, you lost a tiebreaker in the, in the first set. Uh, very close, very tight. And uh, 6-1 in, in, the, in the second uh, set, the deciding set in the French Open. And uh, 25 years later, you came out and recounted the story about the story behind the story about that final. Just to give us the perspective and, and, and your insight uh, that you did bring out many years later about uh, what surrounded circumstances of you playing Navratilova there, center court Wimbledon in the, in the championship. Well, I, obviously that story wasn't going to miss your radar, <laughs> given how you, you know things. But, um, you know, two things on that. One, it's interesting. I don't know if you saw the piece um, this morning. Michael Phelps, there's an HBO documentary that's out today. And um, it's like called The Weight of Gold. Or, and it's, it's about Michael Phelps. I haven't watched it yet because it comes out tonight. And Michael Phelps talks about, how, for Olympians, how difficult it is to train your whole life for a moment in sports. And, and that... And some of those athletes, Olympians, and I'm an Olympian, and some of those Olympians um, work so hard and they fought depression and even had, you know, some suicidal situations. And, and he, he talks about that. Some of them talk about it, frankly. And, and it's good to have those kind of shows because it goes into the mindset of the athlete. Because most people think you just play your sport, you go out, you win or lose, and that's it. And, and that nobody should ever complain because they're making millions of dollars. And I get that part because I am a, a spectator. I, I love sports. So I agree with that part. Professional athletes really have nothing to complain about because if they look at their life compared to the people who are paying for those tickets to come watch them, they need to watch their mouth a little bit because those fans are working hard to go watch them. They're paying good money to go see them. So some complaints of life they have to um, handle. Um, and, and so... And it's one of the reasons why I never said anything for so long on the situation with my Wimbledon final is because as a professional athlete, I just, um, you know, try to respect the game in a certain way. And, and I just was in a situation where it was d difficult as a team to navigate. And um, I had I had beaten uh, Martina in the tournament before on grass at Eastbourne and it was playing phenomenal. We just talked about my, um, my semis. But you never know what's going to happen in a match. Everybody, you know, you wake up one day, you're not playing great. And But what happened with my final is the day before my final, my dad was, a, as we talked about, a fantastic coach. But we lost the father-daughter relationship. You have to give up something. We didn't have that anymore. We just had coach-daughter, which was fine. I'm a professional athlete. I'll take it. I'd rather have that um, at that time. That's what I thought. That's what he thought. And that's what we did. And we didn't realize what we lost. But the problem was my father, bless his heart, in heaven as he is, decided to be a father the night before my final. Mm. And he came to me and said, um, and the only reason this story ever got out is someone watched my match and they said, I watched your match, this is 25 years later, and they said, you didn't try. And, and I respect reporters that do their work. I just do. And, and, and I said, you know, no, I didn't. And she goes, I've watched this. What happened? Because you were playing terrific. You beat her the week before. What happened? And I figured after 25 years, no one would care. And she deserved the truth. And so I explained my father. And I just did it very lightly at that time. I just said, you know, my dad and I got in a disagreement. It was true. And there was, you know, a situation that occurred and I ended up not trying in my finals because of the circumstance. So I gave like kind of an abbreviated version. But what happened was my dad came to me and said, um, I heard from some of the other parents that have kids on the circuit, minor and kids that grew up on the circuit, that some things going on in the circuit that are making, um, causing problems for the girls, the young girls. And he goes, I need you to tell me about them right now or I'm pulling you from the little bit of mine. And I was like, okay, so now you're going to have this conversation. So I just asked politely, and I've never defied my father. I just said, let's talk about it when we get home. And in and, and one side of me, I was so relieved that finally, after all these years on the circuit, I could have a conversation with my family about some things that were, I felt horrible, horrific. And, um, but now wasn't the time. I was a professional athlete. I'm, I'm ready to play my final. Let's deal with family matters later. And he said, um, 
no, tell me now, or I'm going to pull you. Mm. And so I was in a dilemma um, at that situation. And so I, there's two aspects of the story, and, and Martina was in the flat next to me. And I thought, you know what? There's one side he's probably asking about what's going on. Are there some women that have certain kind of interests? And then there's probably the other side, where is, is there any abuse going on? So there's two different tangents to the story. And I thought, well, if I can just give him one, maybe he'll be okay and that's it. So I thought, this isn't my story to tell. I need to talk to Martina and see. Completely forgetting that, not forgetting that we have a final, but remembering I take tennis on the tennis court. I don't live tennis off the tennis court. Mm. I've never been that way. So she lived next door to me, knock on the door or stay next door to me at the tournament, ran to her door, <laughs> was thinking logically as a teenager, I'll just ask Martina, do you mind if I tell my dad some of the things that are going on in the circuit? I, you know, your choices are fine. I have no problem, you know, your choices. Um, you're not someone that's in an abusive situation that I've encountered. You're, you know, but if I can tell him this part, maybe he'll be okay. And that was just my logic. It wasn't my story to tell. It was her story on that part of it. And I went her, um, the person in her flat opened the door and I went up there and you walk up these stairs and she was sitting across from the kitchen in this like little dining area and watching TV. And she turned and looked at me and I'm kind of ups, you know, upset. I had not a lot of tears because I don't cry much, but you could tell I wasn't like happy go lucky. Hmm. And she turned around, looked at me, saw that and turned back and watched TV. And all of a sudden it dawned on me, oh my gosh, I forgot this is the women's professional tennis circuit. These people take their tennis to a different level they take it home. And I thought, now I've just disrupted the person's concentration who I'm playing in the finals tomorrow. I need to leave. I need to leave immediately because I, I sportsmanship is like important to me. And I want to make sure that however she's concentrating for the final, she has that final. I don't want her to feel sorry for me. I don't want her to be upset about what had happened. I just need to go. So went in the kitchen and the person that had let me in had said, um, Andrea, you don't look okay. Are you okay? And I go, you know, not really, but I don't think Martina wants to talk about it. this. Isn't the time for her either. Um, can I just use your phone to call a cab? And that was it. I left her place. I got in a cab. I walked around to try in the restaurant area to find people that I could talk about on the go to floor and say, look, I need to talk to my dad about this. He deserves the truth. Um, there's some really abusive power, some horrible things that I've encountered. I'd like to talk to him about it. We want to talk about it tonight. And what, how do I handle this? You're the PR people, you're the media people, you're the director. How do I handle it? So I went and found one of those people in a restaurant, saw them in the restaurant, and she was in a personal circumstance at the restaurant. Oh, wow. Mm. I'm like, okay, that's not going to work. And then, um, so I kept trying to find someone to go, uh, this is a unique situation. How do I handle it? How can I handle it and still play the Wimbledon final? And realized I couldn't go back to my flat. This happened in the evening. I couldn't go back. And, and so if I didn't go back to the flat, then I wouldn't have defied my father. He didn't have me in front of him to say, okay, tell me now, or I'm going to go, you know, not, I'll pull you from the final. So long story short, I just kind of, traveled around all day, um, didn't go back. And then the next morning, went and got my tennis stuff, didn't warm up for the match. And in my logic said, I can't try in this match. If I win, Martina can go and stay. Andrea came over here and disrupted my concentration. And now I'm the villain. Now I'm a villain who's a horrible person who ruined her concentration for a Wimbledon final. And I'm like, character's more important than winning Wimbledon for me. Um, my dad shouldn't get in trouble for this one because he didn't do anything and she might blame it on my father um, because it might come to, well, my dad asked me a question and I'm like, I'm not going to blow up a women's tennis today. I'm just not. I'm not going to be that person. And so I didn't try my Wimbledon final and my dad um, knew it and never asked me the question again, unfortunately. <laughs> mm. <laughs> he <never> did. Um, mm. And I went home and I went to the press conference and, and I knew in the match, I'm like, okay, if Martina gets ahead, her confidence builds. So just let her get ahead. She'll start 
playing freely. She'll start playing better. Um, when you get ahead of her, she, she kind of panics a little. And so I knew that. And then I let her get ahead. And then I thought, oh, wait a minute, TV timeouts. I can't make this too easy for her because people pay for commercials. I need to make it a little closer in the second set because of TV commercials. And then that was it. Shook her hand, went to the press conference. No one asked me a question. So I never lied about the situation. They never asked me, did you try? They said, wow, Martina's really good on grass. And I said, you're absolutely right. She's great on grass. And left it at that. And 25 years later, someone contacted me and said, you didn't try. And so I an answered them honestly and said, no, I didn't. And they said, why? And I said, I had a disagreement with my father. And, um, you know, that was, that was my logic of, you know, I, I didn't want to be the person, certainly at Wimbledon, to mm. have no Wimbledon be played. And then not only have no Wimbledon, because if I told my father some of the things I encountered, he would have pulled me. And I never would have played professional tennis again. The circuit would have been investigated. It would have been a disaster. Um, and therefore, we were on such a, um, a great launch of so many fantastic things in women's tennis. I didn't want to ruin it for little kids looking up to people. I mean, that was, you know, when you think about when you're 17, 18 years old, what's your best logic? That was my best logic. And um, there was nobody else in the supportive system in that environment at that time that could have stepped in to solve it any other way. And such is life.